Okay, good afternoon and welcome to the STEM Digital School. This is Coding for Grade 7. I am your presenter, Mr. Paul de Klerk. There is my email address on the screen there. So if you have a notebook, you can write that down. If you're viewing this on a device, you can take a screenshot or a screen capture. And then you can send me through any questions that we may not get to during these lessons, as well as sharing any of the codes that you create with us. Uh, the codes that you guys create, you can share that with me. I would like to see what you are making, especially if you go on and you do some extra things that we do not discuss in class. Maybe experiment or something. I'd love to see, excuse me, what you guys get up to. So if you are visiting us on the live stream, uh, well, or on YouTube, because we will upload this to YouTube later, then you can um, email me here as well with any of the code that you create. Also, if you have any questions, you can send it here. And then if you would like to come and join us here in the live lessons so that you can have access to the chat box, then you can go to the Africa Team Geeks website and you can just ask your parents to register with the email address. They're not going to register. They are subscribing to a newsletter. So they will receive a newsletter via email and this will tell them when the classes are, what days, what times, and then also the links that comes and leads you to this class. Then you can join us and you can have access to the chat box and everything that I share in there. Okay, so before we get going, just in case you might have some new friends here, if you are new and if you are not new, the chat box is used for you to ask questions and for me to share information. You do not have to share any links in there. That's why I am here. And it allows me to sort of maintain a steady pace if I am the only one sharing the link to the puzzles we are on in the chat box. So if someone requests a link, I will share it. You don't have to do that on my behalf. You also don't have to share the link right after I've shared the link. It just floods the chat box with unnecessary information. We're not here to chat to our friends. We're here to sort of learn about coding. So I would appreciate it if we keep the chat box with regards to what we're typing and sending in there, if we can keep that organized and if we can keep it uh, related or relative to whatever you see on the screen. <clears throat> so the next thing I want to ask is please be mindful of your cameras. I know you guys are using your devices, so you're switching them on and off accidentally. Um, but if you make your camera switch on six or seven times, then we start wondering if that is really an accident. I have removed students from the classrooms before, and I will not hesitate to do it again. The reason for that is we want to create an environment where parents can send their kids and where you as kids and students can come and confidently know that you are going to be learning something in a safe environment. So if you're sharing links that aren't relevant, then you're making it unsafe, then I will remove you. If you are playing with your camera and pulling funny faces, then you are making it an environment that is not conductive to learning, and then I will remove you. Okay, so it's not because we want to be full of nonsense, it's just we have to take into account everybody that we are trying to reach. Right, so I think all of that has been said and done. Now we can get into our lesson for today. So here are the coding principles. If you are new or you're watching this video for the first time on YouTube or wherever you do your live streaming, I um, chat about these coding principles at the beginning of every lesson. And the reason for that is I want you to take these principles, build a foundation with them, and start practicing them to the extent that they become a habit, okay? So a habit is something that you do extinct instinctively, okay? So what I mean by that is each and every time you approach the task of writing computer code, I want you to do it in this way, okay? And the, re the reason for that is these principles that I have put together for you it doesn't just relate to the code that we are writing in these lessons. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I have worked with six or seven coding languages in my six years of having been involved with computer coding. Currently, I use three of them in unison to create one end product. Okay. So my 
principles with these principles they were created with the idea that you can easily take them and you can form habits and those habits will help you to learn any other code languages that you might want to use in future okay because the basics as we have for human language the basics for computer coding language is the same between different languages okay so if you have these down and you really take note of them you really pay attention and make them a part of who you are when you are coding then you will more easily adjust to newer coding languages okay so let's just get into this the first one is we always want to identify the goal so whether this is the goal in a puzzle that we're doing in these lessons or whether it's a project that you're doing for a client or for your boss one day or even if you have coding at school and it's a project you need to do then you really need to take some time and work through everything before you just start coding so that you can make sure you understand what the goal is now sometimes that goal can be huge and we have to do about 20 lines of code if i'm creating websites i can easily do five uh, five pages of code for one single web page okay so if you take that into account then you quickly realize that you don't want to just tackle the entire goal in one setting you want to divide that goal into smaller problems and that is going to allow you to then solve each problem on its own merit and then when once you've solved all the problems then you will reach the goal so the first part of the problem solving workflow is we want to identify those smaller problems we just spoke about then we want to create a solution for those problems then we want to test our solution and we want to adjust the solution if we need to do that oh junior is here good all right and then lastly we want to apply information management practices this becomes really important when you start writing long long pieces of code because you want to be able to go back to the code and debug it if you need to or you want to adjust something you don't have to read through everything you can just scan the comments and only work in the necessary sequence okay right so we are now moving into harvesting with conditionals puzzle one to six okay now let me just jump to that coding screen however we're not finished with this one until loops in a maze we're quickly going to look at number 10 we're not going to do number 10 i'm just going to talk you through that we'll do 11 and then we'll move on the link is in the chat box if you need it you can just go there the nice thing about this if you're new you can keep this link open after the lesson or you can copy it from the um, address bar paste it somewhere on your computer not in the chat box because once we close the meeting the chat box is gone and so paste it somewhere on a text document on your computer and that will allow you to access this link even though we're not in the lesson this is a section i created for you guys specifically and it comes with extras and all that jazz so you can go and play on this in your own time and do some extra work if you'd like. Okay, Junior Armor, you know me by this time. So if you are ready on this page, just type a yes in the chat box. I see Gao is also here. Welcome. And then to our new friends, I only see Zoe is now the newest name that I have here. Zoe, welcome. We're glad to have you. So just type yes if you're ready. I see Armor and Gao is ready already. They or they are already ready. Okay, right, I'm not gonna wait too long because as I said, this gets uploaded to YouTube and they don't want to wait for comments and chats that they can't see. So here we have this uh, play area. This is where the maze is that needs to happen. We can see we're doing until loops in a maze. So an until loop is a conditional loop. We're using that to complete the maze, right? And here we can see our goal is we need to help the zombie get the sunflower first zombie in my life that i met that eats sunflowers but okay i can i can go with that all right so next to the play area we have our toolbox and this is filled out with nice blocks that we can use and each one of these blocks act like code they actually represent this line in text-based coding but that is for an older age while we are learning we learn it in block based coding and i wish i knew about block based coding when I learned how to code. These systems didn't exist back then. I had to learn coding in this. And believe me, it was much more difficult. Not that this is easy, but it is easier. Okay, 
So this is our toolbox filled with blocks. I will explain each block as we use them. I'm not going to run through these now. We're going into a new lesson and then some of these won't be relevant anymore. Under our play area, we have a run button which is connected to the when run block. You can see because they are the same color. And when we click on this run, this when run block will activate and it will start running any code that is underneath it. It has to be touching. If it's like that and it's blacked out, it won't work. Shade it out. It has to touch. They all have to connect. Okay. So now we can, this is our workspace where we create our code. So we can take blocks from here, put it there. If we don't want it, we drag it back into this. We delete it off the workspace, not out of the toolbox. Okay. So once a block is in the toolbox, you can't remove it. It'll stay there until this puzzle is done. Here we have a restriction of five blocks and within this goal, we also have the restriction that we can only move on the pathway. We cannot cut past the grass and just come down here. We have to follow the pathway that is there, okay? The other restriction is we don't want to go close to these purple flowers because they like zombie. We dub them Venus zombie, Fla Venus zombie traps in another lesson, I think. Okay, so what we have here is when we start reading code, we don't want to start here at the beginning. I know in English and in most languages, you read from left to right and from top to bottom, but now we actually want to start with the smallest first move so that we can identify what is going to happen. So here we said our first goal is we want this zombie to move from there to there. That's the first goal. So the way we do that is we place a move forward block, but now we don't want to use only one move forward because that's only going to move one space. And we can't use seven move forwards because then we run out of space here, okay? We are only limited to five blocks and this is only going to get us to here. So we still have to add three more. So the only way to do that is we use a repeat block. And this repeat block is going to say, repeat until the sunflower. So this is a repeat until goal block. The goal is the sunflower. So what, as long as this is false, this, statement is false so in meaning we are not at the sunflower it will do this right because there you can see repeat until sunflower do this so once we are at the sunflower this statement becomes true until sunflower we are at the sunflower then it will skip this and it will just go on to whatever code is underneath it okay so when we did that we found out yesterday that it works to get us to there right Right. Now we have to turn to come down. So we had this turn in there. But we also said that if we do this, we are going to turn immediately. And that's not what we want. Look at that. Right. So now we have two options. We can either use the if path to the left or if path to the right. The problem with that is each time he is moving, he's going to pass paths either on both sides or he's going to pass paths that he, we don't want him to take. So instead of making him look for the paths, we use the conditional in his movement that is moving him forward. So instead of telling him, okay, each time you move, you check, and if there's something you turn, we're telling him, we want you to move forward as long as there's a path. Because we can see in our mind's eye that each time he's going to turn right is at the end of a pathway. So you can see that there. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Oh, it doesn't go bigger. That's as big as it goes, sorry. There's my mouse pointer making a circle. So when we get there, this path is finished. So what will happen is we're going to move forward while the path is there. This is another conditional loop. While the path is there, we will move forward, okay? But once this is false, so this one is a repeat until, so this one is false until uh, true. This one is true until false, okay? So this one does this as long as this is true, while there's a path. But the moment there isn't a path anymore, it's going to jump to the next block of code and we're telling it to turn right. So now you can see he's checking for a path in front of him. That's what those white lines are doing that looks like a Wi-Fi symbol. And there he does the same. Now he reaches the end of the path, that loop doesn't function anymore and then it just keeps going on to the next block of code in the sequence. Right, are you guys ready? Can I continue? I assume that's it. Okay, good, Amma, thank you. 
just in case someone extra is here. I haven't seen anyone new coming in, but there we go. Okay, so look carefully at the code below. What will happen after you click run? Okay, so first we need to look at this maze. We need to look at the code and then we can read this or you can read this and then try to verify this according to that. It doesn't matter. So in my opinion, I'm going to read this first. I'm going to say, oh, there's a move forward and this is saying do that while there is a path ahead. So we can already see he will move this way as long as there's a path ahead, okay? Then it says turn right. So the moment there isn't a path ahead anymore, it's going to turn right and it's going to do that one time, then it'll go back to this loop, okay? So in my opinion, if we just look at that, we can already see he's going to check for a path and move all the way here, all the way here, but he's going to go into this little cavity here. This path is, is past this one because there is a path ahead. So it's not going to turn here. The turn only starts happening once there isn't a path anymore. Okay. So let's see. The zombie will pass the correct path and end up going back and forth forever. The zombie will make it to the sunflower. The zombie will turn right on the first path and go around in circles forever. So, D says, I don't know. So, we can never choose D in my class because we need to figure it out. Okay? C says the zombie will turn right on the first path and go around in circles forever. So, here's the first path. He's not going to turn right here because there's still a path ahead of him. So, he's going to keep on moving. B says he will make it to the sunflower. Now, in my opinion, he's not going to make it to the sunflower because he's not going to pass this one. He's not going to turn up here because he's going to keep walking there. So I say it's A. Let's see. And look at that. So what happens is he turns right and that makes him turn around and then he starts moving again. He gets here and he turns right. There, he checks for a path. There is no path. Remember this repeat is on. He checks for a path. There is no path if he's facing this way. So he turns right again. Now he's facing this way. Now the same thing happens. There is a path. So he runs this way. Then he hits this side. There is no more path. So he turns right. Then he tries to come down. There is no more path. So he turns right. Now there's a path again. And he's just going to continue like that forever. Okay. So let me just, okay. You can carry on. Right, we are going to start with the new lesson, I think. Again, if you stay on this link afterwards, then you can come here and do these lesson extras, okay? We're not here to watch videos. Okay. Before we start, allow me a sip of water. While you guys navigate to this link, I'm just going to share it one time like this okay okay so now we are going to be harvesting with conditionals all right and we have this play area here and the first thing I notice without even reading or checking anything is that we don't know what type of vegetables there are. We really cannot see by those small sprouts that are standing there. So let's see what they say. Corn, you help me to harvest today. Okay, that's a bit of a farmer's pun there. Help the harvester check her row of corn to see if anything is ready to pick. Use conditionals to look at each sprout. Every stalk will have either zero or one pieces of corn ready to harvest. So they are telling us that this is corn. Okay. Hi, if it's your first time, you are very welcome here. We are doing a few advanced topics, but that is okay. I'm sure you will catch up quickly. If you cannot, you'll see my email address at the end of this. Then you can. Okay. Then I'm not going to even continue. Right. So 
We want to help the harvester check her row of corn to see if anything is ready to pick. So we want to use conditionals to look at each sprout. Okay, and every stalk will either have zero or one pieces of corn to harvest. So our restrictions, we have five blocks. Our goal is we need to check and harvest. So in the chat box, tell me what are we going to do first? Remember, take the goal, divide it into smaller problems, and then tell me, what do you think is the first block that we need to place on this workspace of ours? Yeah, oh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. They've left. Okay, between Amogal Jr. and I see there's one person there. Okay, so this we say, first move forward, then add if there is corn, pick, put pick corn. Okay, great. So Gal gave us the solution. He says, our first problem is we need to start moving because we can't check these if we are standing there. So we're going to move forward. Then he says we need to check them. So we can't just say pick corn because we don't know. We want to say if there is corn, then you pick. Okay. Now this is going to be the solution for the first one, but then we stop there. So we tested it and it's a good solution, but we can see this has to happen again. So now there are two types of repeats here that we can use. Which one do you think we should use? The repeat number of times or repeat while path ahead? Which repeat? Amu? Ah, Gao, sorry. There are two. We have this one and this one. Which one do you want me to try? First one, okay. And how many times? I that's not what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. How many times are we going to repeat that? We can count one, two, five times. Right, let's run it and see. And you've got it. So now we've used the normal repeat by number block, we've used the conditional, and we were able to get the corn here. And the corn wasn't evenly spaced, so we could have used the little blocks to do that. Right, are you ready for the next puzzle? Type yes in the chat box if you are. That's okay, Amu, no problem. If you want to catch up, you can visit the Africa Team Geeks website and go to the YouTube channel to watch the videos, okay? But I understand they've changed the times and that means that sometimes you will have to leave early. That's not a problem at all. Thank you for coming anyway. Right, so we're going to continue. Gal says he's ready. I think we are good. Good to go. Okay, so let us collect both crops from this row. So now there's another farming pun there. Okay, let's check what this is saying. The garden is all mixed up. It has both corn and lettuce. Help the harvester pick the items that are ready for harvesting. Each plant will have either one corn or one lettuce. We have seven blocks. That's our restriction. Yeah, these are the blocks we have to use. So let's do this. What do you guys think? First block. Okay, 
So the first thing we want to do is we want to divide this into smaller problems. The first problem we have is we need to move towards this. You can't do anything from there. So we're going to place a move forward block. Okay. Now we have a couple of blocks here. Now we need to pay attention to the fact that we're limited to seven blocks. So what you can do is you can say, if there is lettuce, and I think this is what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to pick lettuce, okay? We cannot use this one. We're going to say, if there is corn, we'll pick corn. And we're going to repeat that one, two, three, four, five, six times. Okay. No, there, right? This two is six, and we can test this. And just check, okay, yes, yes. Okay, so this is going to work. I want to show you another block here, this one. Let's use that with a move forward. So now we can say, if there is corn, pick corn. Otherwise, pick lettuce. The problem with this is, right? If there is corn, do this. If there is no corn, do this, but if there is no corn, it doesn't guarantee that there will be lettuce. If you look at this block here and this block here and the last block there, not that we're going up to the last block, but these two in between, there isn't corn there, but there also isn't lettuce there. So this is telling him, if this is true, do this. If it is not true, do this. So it's different to this one. This one is saying, if there is lettuce, pick lettuce. If there is no lettuce, do nothing. Just follow the rest of the, the loop. Follow the rest of the code. This one says, if there is corn, pick the corn. If there isn't corn, then you pick lettuce. Doesn't matter what there is. This is not checking for lettuce. This is just saying, if this is false, do this. So now you end up with the situation, if you run this, where the code is going to try and harvest something there. And then you can see, I can't harvest that crop from you. So even on the empty blocks now, this is trying to harvest. So we use these blocks here. Now we can remove one, move forward. That was for the example. So we move, we use these blocks here so that if there is no lettuce, nothing will happen. If there is no corn, nothing will happen. So if both of them are not there, nothing is going to happen. It's just going to go back into the repeat. So on an empty block, nothing is happening. She's not trying to do anything. She's not trying to harvest anything. Okay, does that make sense? Can I continue? Okay. Corn, lettuce, and pumpkins help me harvest them all. Each plant will have either one piece of corn, one head of lettuce, or one pumpkin. You have nine blocks. Now remember the same thing with this block. We have empty spaces there. So we cannot try to harvest something there. So this block is a trick. Right, what is the first block that I have to put in here? Who can tell me? Junior. Gao and our other friend, I can't pronounce that name with all the numbers, 7DJ1R4. Okay, these are still really easy ones to do. So I hope I'm not losing you. Okay, so our first problem that we can see is we have to move forward, obviously, okay? Now, we obviously need to move forward all the way to there, so we can actually use this entire uh, while path ahead conditional. Now, I don't have to go and count, just because I'm lazy, I don't have to go and count here how many times to repeat this one. Because we can see that that stalk is on the last, or that sprout is on the last space in this row. Okay? And so we can test this and we'll see, oh, she's moving all the way. So we've done our first 
part of this code correct. Okay, so now the next one is we cannot use this one because there are empty spaces and this is going to try and force her to harvest something on a place or a space where there isn't something to harvest. So we need to use a couple of these. We say if there are pumpkins, pick pumpkins. If there are lettuce, pick lettuce. If there are corn, is corn, pick corn. Okay, I want to chat on this very quickly so that we, I'm sure that you understand, okay? We cannot just put pick, pick pumpkin or pick lettuce or pick corn in here because it's going to try and make her pick th some things where it isn't there. And now she's trying to pick a pumpkin there. There isn't a pumpkin there. So these have to be put into conditionals, okay? The only conditional that will work here is if we use three of these different individuals. This one, again, we cannot use because if we say pick the pump, uh, let's say if there is corn, pick corn. If there is a pumpkin, pick pumpkin. This is what it is basically saying. If there is a corn, pick corn. Otherwise, pick a pumpkin. So this is not saying if there is a pumpkin, pick pumpkin. This is saying pick, pick a pumpkin, period. If this isn't true, this is what you do. And we're putting it inside the repeat because we want it to happen. Did I now remove blocks? Okay. We want it to happen every time the farm is moving forward. If we put it under the block, it's going to say, while this is here, let's run it and see. While, it's, while there is a path, it's going to move and then it's going to stop and then it's going to go through this. But now we've skipped one, two, three, four crops that we could have picked. So we want that back in there. Now we're saying, move one time, check for pumpkins, lettuce and corn, every time after you've moved. Can I move on to the last puzzle for the day? Just need to quickly share the link there if somebody has difficulty accessing this. Oops, let me just open this again. Shut the chat box down accidentally. Okay. Gosh, now the lettuce is glowing, growing in clusters. The harvester wants to pick everything from their lettuce garden. Each plant will now have more than one head of lettuce on it. So the harvester will need to keep picking while there is lettuce growing. Remember this garden only has lettuce. Okay. So this is what we have. This can only be lettuce, but there's a difference. There isn't necessarily only one lettuce under each one. There can be different amounts of lettuce. Okay. We have five blocks to do this. So let's start by breaking it into smaller problems. The first one is we need to move all the way down here. Now after we've moved, we want to check something. So now we have this while there is lettuce and we have this if there is lettuce. So I say we need to say if there is lettuce, pick the lettuce, but we need to make it pick the lettuce 
the entire time. So I don't know if this if will work. I don't think so, because I think this is going to make it only pick once. Okay, so Gao says, okay, so my solution did exactly what I thought it will do. It only picks one. Gao says, if add a move forward, add while there is lettuce. Okay. So he says we need to do this one. Now let's see. And look at that. Good girl, very good. So we're not just checking to see if the lettuce is there because we know each plant has lettuce. That is obvious because I said that here at the top. This garden only has lettuce. We know we need to move forward so that we can be on top of these sprouts. We cannot harvest them from one or two away. We have to be right on top of them. Then we say while this is lettuce. So this is one of those things again. While this is true, do this. As soon as this is false, you carry on to the loop and you run the sequence again. Okay. And you need to remember this is checking every time. One time move, one time checking. Okay, well done, Gal. That was really good. I am super impressed. Okay, tomorrow we are going to start with this puzzle six. I know it's a little bit early, but that's okay because we are on schedule and I have another class to prepare for. So I'm in a bit of a stress for that. So today we did harvesting with conditionals. Oh, we're supposed to do up to puzzle six according to the lesson plan. Okay, do you guys quickly want to finish puzzle six? Let's do this. Okay, what a bountiful crop. This field has clusters of corn and lettuce growing together. With one pumpkin at the end, can you harvest everything? Right. So now we have a new repeat block. This one says while there are pumpkins, so that we need to pay attention to. And now we need to just quickly see there, uh, the field has clusters of corn and lettuce. Okay, so these are clusters. That means it's more than one. Right? And there's only one pumpkin at the end. So I think what we want to do is we want to move forward, but now we need to think about what repeat are we going to use. We don't need to use the repeat while path is ahead. That's good because this while path is ahead is going to take us all the way there, but we need to stop there. So we're going to use this new one. And this new one says, as long as this is true, as long as there are pumpkins or is at least one pumpkin, all of this is going to happen. Then we need to say, while there is corn, we want you to pick corn. And we need to say, while there is lettuce. Now remember, we can change that. We want you to pick lettuce. And then at the end of it all, we want you to pick a pumpkin because there's one pumpkin right at the end. Let's run it and see. Okay, so we are checking while there is lettuce, it's being picked. While there is corn, it's being picked. And there we've just picked that pumpkin as well. Okay. If we put this inside the loop, it might still work. I can't remember. Okay, look at that. This puzzle changes each time. Oh no, it doesn't. Okay, you see. Because it happens when you put it inside, and this is now me teaching you something that I've been telling you ever since day one. This code runs sequentially, so it's going to do that, do that, do that. If it cannot do this or this, it's going to try and do that. But now we're just saying picking, pick pumpkin. We didn't say to check for anything, nothing. We just said pick pumpkin. So now it's going to try and pick a pumpkin each time this code is finished running. Okay, so it has to be outside. Right, I think you guys have this one down.
we will look at it again tomorrow. Let me jump back here. There's my email address. I'm going to leave it on the screen for a minute or two. If you guys want to ask questions or share anything with me, you want to invite friends, you're welcome to do that. Okay. And then this is what we're going to be doing tomorrow. We're going to be harvesting with conditionals, puzzle six to 11. So we're going to review puzzle six that we just ran through just now. You can keep the links open, okay? Just check if I still have that link. Yes, you can go there, keep that link open, copy and paste it to your desktop, not into the chat because then you're gonna lose it. And then you can go and play on your own time if you'd like to. So thank you to the STEM Lockdown Digital School. Please follow us uh, on these social media handles. You can visit the Africa Team Geeks website, ask your parents to subscribe to the mailing list or ask your friends to ask their parents. They will receive the daily schedule as well as the links to the lessons. Sometimes for security purposes, we do change the links, but we always update them on our newsletter. Okay and use these social media handles and posting about us on social media. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being respectful, those of you that were. And uh, I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a great day. Cheers, Gal.